Hello, it is Nika or Donica or Nika Bunny or whatever you want to call me that isn't offensive. And this is my third YouTube video. This was the video that I was hinting at on my last video where I played Isaac, which if you haven't seen it, you should go watch it. It's a little long. It's a little longer than I wanted it to be. So I understand if you can't sit through like a 35, I swear to God, my shirt won't fucking stay where I want it to. And it's driving me nuts. You want to watch it please go ahead and give it a watch and a like. Meanwhile, this is the next video, and I figured, like, you will be able to see me playing Isaac. That's why it's part one. But I want to do different things with my channel, and I figured this would be kind of a funny idea to do, especially since r slash am I the asshole is so popular and so fun to read for so many people, including me, that I figured it would be a good idea. I'm just going to go ahead and start and disclaim, I'm sorry about the cars, you will be able to hear them, but I live on a main road and it's prime time for people to be heading home from work, so unfortunately you're just going to hear the cars. Um, I try to keep it as quiet as possible and I try not to talk when it's super loud, but I also try to talk a little louder so you can hear me over the cars. Um, basically, I have autism and one of my favorite things to do while I'm scrolling through r slash am I the asshole is to try to see what verdict I come to before reading the comments. And now I know Reddit is not the most moral or even mentally sound place on the internet. It's actually pretty unfucking hinged, but I will say that it's fun to see if I can get around where the general consensus is. Um, so basically we're going to be reading stories together, which I do know some of them are fake, some of them are made up, but still for the fun, we're going to read the stories together. I'm going to come to a consensus and then we'll check the comments and see if I've matched or even gotten a little bit close. And if I have, I'll give myself one point. And if I'm not anywhere near where other people seem to be landing, then I don't get anything, bitch, I failed. Am I the asshole for canceling my birthday party because my parents cut my sister a slice of my custom made cake the night before my party when she cried for it? I'm going to try my best not to give my opinion until the end of the story because I find that I immediately already have like things I want to think and say, but we don't have all the deets yet, so we're going to wait. My 11-year-old sister is the miracle golden child. She always gets what she wants whenever she wants. My parents are always trying to please her and make her happy. They always make a big effort on her birthday and do whatever that she asks for. That's worded a little weird, but they can barely remember mine and they are always conveniently broke. This year, I wanted to enjoy my birthday, so I babysat and even mowed lawns to make this possible. I just have to say, if you deal with favoritism, I am so sorry. Like, parents should always go out of their way to make sure that no child feels differently than the other. And I'm not saying that favoritism isn't something that might naturally happen. I don't know. I don't have children. But I do know that even if you do have a favorite, you shouldn't make it known. My birthday was a few days ago and the party was scheduled for the day after. I have been planning for weeks and invited all my friends. I bought the food, snacks, and drinks and picked up my custom made cake, which I was really excited about. It was just perfect. That's sad that your parents did literally nothing for your birthday. I don't know how old you are, but if your sister's 11, you're probably not old. The night before the party, I noticed that my cake, which was in the fridge, had a huge slice missing. When I asked my dad, he shrugged and nonchalantly said that my sister was crying for it and it was just a small piece my friends wouldn't notice. I yelled at him, asking him why he would do something like that when it wasn't even bought with this money, with his money, and that my sister could have waited for tomorrow. This made him angry and he went on a tirade about how I think I'm an adult because of my stupid party, implying at the fact that I did everything myself and did not ask them for anything. I ended up calling it off because I was not able to change the location last minute as I didn't have the means to and I was so hurt, I didn't want to host it at home anymore. One of my friends told me that calling it off was an overreaction and that I could have just gripped my teeth and gone through with doing it at home rather than canceling just hours before. You are not the asshole for being upset at your parents. You are not the asshole for being upset at your sister. You're not even the asshole for having a strong reaction. Your friends should just be able to come together and throw you something that you deserve. Clearly your family's not going to do it for you and you're not going to be treated well by the people around you. So absolutely you're not the asshole. I think that your family is enabling your sister to become somebody that's going to be very hard to deal with in their adult life. And they're enabling you to be walked all over. And luckily it seems like you're trying your best to not let that happen. But I will say also you inhibited your own fun. You still could have had a great birthday party. And although it would have been annoying to have your family around and you would have definitely been upset in the background, just showing them that you're still able to have fun regardless of whether or not they put you down is going to be a power move, girl. 
or, or boy, I was it a girl? Did I say it was a girl? No, the sister was a girl, so this could be a boy. Next time you're in this situation, let these bitches know you are not going to be put down. You're not going to miss your own fun because they don't want you to have fun. Have the party. Have the fun. Throw it in their face that you're having a blast. Make a joke out of the... You know what I mean? Like, own it. Own the situation for yourself. It's easier said than done, but I've actually been there. I've been in situations like that before, and the best part of it is to not let them get to you. But I, this is probably a child, and I'm just giving them advice. I feel so bad for them. They probably are very hurt, and they're probably very lonely, and they probably don't feel like they matter in their family at all. And that's a horrible, horrible way to make your child feel. Absolutely not the asshole. Not the asshole. But next year, see if you can have your party at someone else's house. Don't invite your family. Next time something like this happens, just show the cake the way it is. Let people ask and let your parents answer. I agree with that so much. Next time, don't set yourself up for that disappointment. I know you, it's not your fault. You didn't set yourself up for failure. That's not what I mean. But I mean, like, you know your family is not going to be there for you. So if you know that, don't set yourself up to be around these people. Like some people unfortunately have to learn very quickly that they can't come to their families with certain things or even be around their families. And it looks like OP has learned their lesson and they will not be invited. So that's very good. Honestly, hosting the party as is and showing the cake as is and explaining to everyone only reflects badly on your parents. You could have even acted surprised in front of everyone. There are going to be many more conflicts like this. Showing your parents' behavior to as many people as possible is going to make your uh, life much easier. Not the asshole, good luck. I agree a thousand percent like I've already said. Make them bitches look bad, not the asshole. So random, call a rectal surgeon. Okay. Um, I mean, you could have held the party and explained the missing slices of your parents giving a slice to your spoiled sister the day before with a what are you going to do shrug and letting the chips fall. Don't cut off your nose to spite your face, not the asshole. And I agree. Canceling the thing, the entire thing may have been a bit, bit, bitch, Holy, I, what the fuck did I just say? Canceling the entire thing may have been a bit disproportional to missing out on the opportunity to present a pristine cake, but you do you, I guess. Either way, not the asshole. Your parents missed a valid opportunity to teach no. They aren't doing you, your sister, or them any favors here. Learning how to say and receive no is absolutely necessary in life. I think that is so true. I have met people who have very clearly never heard the word no, and I'm promising you those people struggle. They struggle in the professional world. They struggle in their romance. They struggle everywhere. Instead, they reinforce the belief your feelings and autonomy do not matter and that your sister can get her selfish way by having a tantrum. Eleven is more than old enough to be told, no, that isn't mine or yours. We don't get to help ourselves with things are not ours just because we want to. And that's very true too. I honestly feel for the sister. Like they're doing what their parents are letting them do. They're doing what their parents are telling them to do. So anyways, I won. I definitely get a point there. I was very much on the note. Obviously, it was a bit of an overreaction, but at the very least, like you're not an asshole for being upset and you're not an asshole for canceling your birthday party because you're probably a child too. And those emotions are big. Number two, am I the asshole for being the rason why the family vacation has to be canceled? Um, I know they meant reason, but I just, I love reading typos. Like, um, although they might be Swedish. Nope, that says swordfish. So also I can't read. To make it short, I married for money. Uh, okay, you're the fucking asshole. <laughs> oh, holy shit. That is a bold start. My husband is with me for appearances and we are happy with our arrangement. Again, you're both an asshole for that. I don't know. Like, I... Okay, two consenting adults, they can do whatever they want, blah, 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 yada, yada. But if you're starting off setting yourself up for failure, which to me that is setting yourself up for failure... Getting into a lifelong commitment for money and looks is a failure because both things will more than likely change. You will not always look the way that you do. And if you're required to always look the way that you do, it's going to be expensive, time consuming, and probably painful. And money can change at any moment. My husband and I married because I have all the qualifications to please his family and he takes financial care of me. His family sounds fucking the worst. What does that mean? We're very fond of each other and even love each other, but not in the classical marriage sense. We're like amazing roommates with some benefits. He and I are free to live our lives independently and without stresses. He's not worried about being cut off from his family and I am finally financially stable and free to work my job that simply is not as economically beneficial. To the problem, my sisters have never approved of my decision. They say I sold myself, which fair, you did. 
but we, but still, we used to be civil with each other. I think that's fair, too. I don't think you have to agree with everything that your siblings do or your friends or family or even maybe your partner. But being civil with somebody, so long as they're not harming somebody else, is kind of my go-to. Last week, we had a family barbecue. I went without my husband. Everything was going great until my oldest niece, 21, sat down next to me and we started talking. And then she asked me to be straight up if I was with my husband for money. I explained to her how we met, our agreement, and so on. She then asked me if if I think it would be okay for her to pretend to be her gay best friend's girlfriend. I told her it was up to her to decide and if there were no negatives to it, like her having actual feelings for him, someone getting hurt like a romantic partner, partner etc., etc., it was a lovely talk. Mmm, I don't know how much I like, and I'm a queer person, so maybe that's why. I don't know how much I like suggesting to somebody that it is okay to pretend to be somebody's girlfriend. It depends on the situation, right? If this person is in danger, if their family is strictly religious, if they're going through insane abuse, if they know they can't come out, that might be one thing. But at 21, however, being gay is not easy. I don't even, I had to be in the closet for a long time. Like I was told bisexuality wasn't real. Demisexuality wasn't real. I was looking for attention. I understand how difficult it can be to be queer. But also like if you want to find love, um, what's going to happen to your friend who's relying on this situation to be whatever they're looking for? It seems like OP makes mid choices. I'm not trying to simplify anything, but to me from what we have, their opinions and choices are a little superficial, so we'll see. Strike two was apparently when my other nieces asked me where my husband was and I told them that he was on vacation. They asked me why I didn't go with him and I said that we only sometimes go together to vacations. We usually take little trips together but go on longer vacations with friends or family. My niece, 16, asked me if it was true what her mom and aunt said about me being a gold digger and I just said, I guess so. Like, that doesn't face me. It's phase. Everybody lives a different lifestyle, and you don't have to live your lifestyle based on what most people think. I don't think that's true. I think if you want to be in an arrangement that helps you, um, that isn't going to be harmful to your identity. Like, the gay one's a little bit different to me, but still, that's fine. Um, I know my sisters constantly talk about me behind my back, and I am not ashamed about my marriage at all, so I see no need to lie. Later that night, my sisters cornered me, and we had a fight about my words with my nieces. They said it was completely inappropriate what I told them, that I am free to live my fucked up life, but to not let my niece think that it is okay what I do. I called them small minded and that I was only answering my niece's questions and I was even honest. They are free to do their own decisions. My sisters kept cornering me, calling me all sorts of names and saying I was basically influencing their daughters negatively because I was miserable. Okay, I don't know why we're jumping from A to fucking Z here. I could see being like, hey, please don't tell my daughter that I, it's okay to do things like this because I don't want her to grow up with those morals. That's totally fine because it's your child. You can let your family know that you don't find it appropriate to tell them certain things. But how the fuck did they go from don't tell my daughter to you're miserable and I, you're trying to influence my daughter to do the same thing you're doing? Like everything that you don't like, and I think people need to learn this, is not influence. Like, if you see a fat person and you don't like that person existing, they're not influencing other people to be fat. They're existing. We got to stop putting the two things together because they're not the fucking same. I said some words back and left, not talking to them the whole week. Now there is a huge fallout because I pulled out of the family vacation because of this fight. But the vacation would be at my husband's summer home. As I am not going, my husband doesn't feel comfortable lending my family the house. My family has been calling me a huge asshole. My sister said that I was blowing things out of proportion. Am I the asshole? Should I still go? Your sisters are assholes for sure. Although I think you can do whatever you want. It sounds like you're not promoting or making the, not promoting. Cause I just like, it's not like you're promoting the idea. However, the gay conversation makes me think you are slightly promoting the idea that using people to appear a certain way is completely fine and that tends to lead to heartbreak. Reality is that she's young and that person's probably young and that's gonna cause a lot of confusion and hurt when it inevitably crumbles because someday they're gonna wanna be them gay, them gay selves, their gay selves and she's gonna wanna love somebody who loves her back. You know what I mean? Like, it sounds like you're not making the best choices but I also don't think that if your family is going to judge you so hard for something you're happy to do that you have to give them a vacation home. I don't think that those two things have to go together. Like, I think you're 
not being careful enough with your impressionable nieces. I also don't think that you owe your sisters who clearly don't give a fuck about the way that you feel and like to talk shit about you anything. I think you're not the asshole for canceling the vacation, which was the original question. I don't think you are. Let's get this straight. You married a guy for his money and he married you as a cover. That works for you. However, your family judges you for it until they don't get to stay at his beach house because they disrespected you. You can't have your cake and eat it too. That's actually a really good point. And I think I was trying to get there where it's like, yeah, they don't have to agree with you. But like also they have you around. They talk to you. You're like, they're you're around their kids. They're even going to use your husband's vacation home as a place to vacation. So where are they, like, where is the judgment coming? Like, God, that's so weird because it's still your husband, right? So if you get married and you love your family and you're like, yeah, you can use my husband's vacation home and they don't agree with your marriage, but they're like, that's fine. It might be a good way for them to get closer to him. It might, it might have been a good way for them to understand the situation more. I don't really know, but that is true. Like, you can't be like, oh, I don't like the way that you live your life and then also go ahead and get the benefits from it. Not to mention they have called you a gold digger in front of your nieces or she wouldn't have asked you if it was true. I didn't remember that. I didn't remember that. You were put on, you were put in a spot to either tell your niece the truth, which personally I find gold digger to be a bit of a stretch or say her mother lied. Would your sister have rather you told your daughter she was a liar? That's a good point. I didn't even think about that. I was more thinking about, I feel like as soon as the gay thing came up, my the red the red flags went off because that's true i think your family is blowing this shit out of proportion and that people are allowed to do what they want to do as i said i don't think you're giving your nieces good advice but i also feel like if your sisters are so concerned about the way that you live your life maybe they shouldn't talk shit about you also what does that teach their daughters now that i think about it to be judgmental assholes that talk about their family. Like this is a very fucking weird situation. I feel like you're largely not the asshole, like I said. I think the fact that the family is so hung up on it, like you're allowed to have your opinions, but why is it such a hot topic? It's like celebrities, like we look at what they do under a microscope and fucking half the time it doesn't matter. So I definitely am sticking with my not the asshole. Uh, extra not the asshole for the idea that your family is trying to benefit from and belittle you at the same exact time. So to condense, because I'm going to cut a lot of this out because I went back and forth a ton with this one. You are not the asshole. Your family is greedy and very judgmental and they don't know how to let go of things that they don't agree with. You're not doing anything wrong by being in this marriage. Giving your young impressionable nieces the advice that this is a good thing to do or that it can be a great option for you is probably not the best thing to do, particularly if it's coming with the caveat of hiding sexuality for the fear of being gay in public, which I know is difficult. I know being queer is difficult because I'm queer, but that's not good advice. So not the asshole. Cutting off the vacation was not the asshole thing to do. We gotta move on. Uh, story number three, am I the asshole for telling my sister to change her dress, wear underwear, or she's not welcome to my wedding? I feel like this shit's already a you're not the asshole because if wear underwear is coming up, what the fuck is the dress? I am a 26 year old female. My sister is two years older than me. I keep hitting the mic. I'm so sorry if it's loud. My sister is two years older than me. My fiance is 30. We were raised in a liberal home where we were allowed to wear anything or nothing at home. Uh, uh okay. That's a little strange, but it's fine. My sister has always dressed very skimply. I want to, like, I want to preface. I don't think liberalism is equivalent to, to nudism. I don't think liberalism is equivalent to nudity. I don't think those two things are the same. Like, I don't think nudists are inherently liberal. But it, I'm not saying, hey, if you were in a nudist family, you were. That's fine. Um, but that's not the same thing. My sister has always dressed very skimpily, and I didn't mind because I was used to it at home. But this time I am feeling a type of way because in my wedding, because I me wedding will be in February 2024 and my sister, who was also one of the bridesmaids, has shown me what she intends to wear. I was shocked to say the least. The dress shows clearly that she's not wearing a bra or panties because it has a slit up to her waist and her back and chest are barely covered. 
I'm uncomfortable with her being around other people, especially my fiance and his family looking like that. My parents see nothing wrong with her outfit. I told her if she doesn't find a different, more decent dress, then she is no longer one of the bridesmaids and she's not invited to my wedding anymore. She feels that I'm being unfair since I have no right to control people wear and I also let all my bridesmaids choose whatever design they wanted as long as they stuck to the colors I gave. Her chosen color sticks to the color scheme and that's okay, but the design makes me feel it's not appropriate. I don't want my sister flashing my guests, but she called me an asshole when I disinvited her. Now she and my parents are not talking to me. My fiance said he has no opinion on it and would go with what I decided. Uh, and this is actually going to be a similar dress. So let's take a look. Okay. So. This one is also fucking weird. Why did I pick the, I didn't read these before. At the end of the day, it's your wedding. If you want your bridesmaids to wear a certain type of dress, or if you're just going to veto a dress, it's your wedding. It's your wedding. You are the one designing this. Your sister should be more than willing to wear something that's going to make you comfortable for your wedding. At the end of the day though, it is your wedding. And if your sister is not willing to wear something to make you comfortable for your wedding, that's a little shitty to me. I think your sister should be able to wear something that's going to make you comfortable. Even if it makes you a little bit of a hypocrite, I also think that not everything is for everywhere. Like if she goes to work, does she wear that kind of dress to work? If she's going to a restaurant that requires a certain type of dress code, is she going to wear whatever she wants? No. I mean, people have to wear what's required of them sometimes. Uh, and I think learning that just because you were raised a certain type of way doesn't mean that you can do whatever the fuck you want is also important. So I'm going with not the asshole. I'm scared to go with not the asshole. Let's see. And this is just one reason why people elope. OP, put your foot down that your sister will not be dressing like this because like she's going to an MTV music award show or she will not be in your wedding because you are the damn bride. And in this case, you can control what your bridal party and even guests wear. Even if your parents are talking to you or don't even attend, you can still get married and your sister can be disinvited if she doesn't behave, not the asshole. I, commander in cheeks, what does that even mean? What is commander in cheeks? As much as you grew up a certain way like it's your it's your wedding like if my sister was like can you wear a parka to my wedding i would do it right like it's it's your sister's wedding it's not she doesn't need to dress up to be the sexiest one in the room i don't know like right like it just it doesn't need more than that like if she's not willing to do the bare minimum and also that your parents are so willing to not talk to you over something so fucking dumb like, if my parents were like, you're not letting your sister wear what she wants, we're not talking to you anymore. I'd be like, well, bitch, you didn't want to talk to me very much to begin with, right? Because it's really not that deep. Isn't it kind of one of the duties of a bridesmaid support and help of a bridesmaid support and help the bride not cause problems and turn their parents against her? Her sister seems to think she's an equal co-star on this shindig. Really, she does not understand the assignment. Kick her out of the party, not the asshole. Like, it's not about you. Like, you're allowed to dress the way that you want to on a daily basis, but girl's not about you. And by that dress, it feels like she thinks it's about her, and it's not. So I will admit I was picturing something very different in my head, and while I was thinking, okay, she's a bride and she can have limits, but maybe she's being a prude. Holy cow. I can't believe someone wants to arrive to a wedding dressed like that, lol. I agree. Who the fuck? Like, I would never in my life go to a wedding and be like, yeah, I'm gonna wear this, this thing that Beyonce wore. You can wear that dress on the street if you want to. But if somebody's like, oh yeah, this is my wedding and we're not doing that vibe, respect it, especially your sister. Anyways, I don't need another comment. I'm giving myself that point. Not the asshole. Your sister's a little fucking crazy. Finally, story number four. Am I the asshole for blowing up with my boyfriend for finishing a tub of sour cream in one day? This sounds very much like I could have wrote it, so... I feel absolutely ridiculous posting this here, but I am literally crying about this and wondering if I'm crazy overreacting. As with everywhere in the U.S., grocery prices in my area are astronomical and I've had to completely change the way I budget for food. Same. I have to be aware of every penny I spend in order to get the most out of my money when it comes to food. Every week I have a grocery budget. I plan out all meals and what I get for the week is what we have. I do not do extra grocery runs during the week unless it's absolutely necessary. I'm going to go ahead and start off by saying not the asshole because that is very true. When you're budgeting and somebody is not following your budget or they don't want to respect your budget 
or they want the benefits of your budget, but they don't want to follow it, that shit is annoying. My boyfriend pays for about 30% of groceries and I pay 70% because he pays more for utilities so it evens out. It really honestly doesn't matter what how much of the groceries he pays for because you are the one budgeting for them. But anyways, however, I always tell him if he wants additional food or if he's still hungry, he can get it himself. Keep in mind, we are not portion restricted. Good. I bought a standard sized tub of sour cream and it was supposed to be used in three different meals. I told him this. I came home today ready to make dinner and it was gone. Not even used for one meal. How the fuck do you eat one full tub of sour cream? Like, I'm trying to rack my whole ass brain trying to think what I could possibly... Let me just read it. He just snacked on it throughout the day. Admittedly, I blew up and started crying, asking him why he would do that when he knows it was supposed to be used for several meals. I try so hard to budget and save money, and I feel like he just doesn't care. So there is a larger problem at play here already. Um, I told him he can either buy a new tub or I'm not cooking for the rest of the week. I told him it's a matter of respect, he, which is true. He thinks it's no big deal and I can just go get a new tub and it is making the point of saying I should be the one to get it, not him. Dump that man, let that man go. He says I'm being dramatic for crying over sour cream and I know it's not super expensive, about $3 where I'm at, but it's the principle. I'm just upset that he can't respect what I'm trying to do and he doesn't understand that we are strapped for money right now. Am I the asshole? Mini update. Those of you who said it's really not about the sour cream but about being disrespected are 100% correct. Also, the Greek yogurt has remained untouched. I'll be using that and any future sour cream purchases will come from him. <laughs> I agree. I don't think that it's about the sour cream. I think that your boyfriend doesn't fucking respect you. And the fact that he's like, I ate all the sour cream, even though you asked me not to, and you should be the one to go get it, tells me that your boyfriend should probably be let the fuck go. Because he doesn't sound like he gives a shit. Info, how did he snack on sour cream? Like, with a spoon, right? Like, what the fuck are you eating so much sour cream with? What are you eating the sour cream? I don't understand. I can't get that thought out of my head. Bitch, me neither. For everyone responding, just put some seasoning in it and dip. One, that's not what OP's boyfriend did. Two, that's still weird to eat a full thing of dip in a day. Yeah, you need to slow down. Um, I think he put some large spoonfuls into soup or whatever he ate for lunch and then used it as dip. That's just fucking gross. Your boyfriend's gross, by the way. <laughs> I don't want to be judgmental, but like, ugh. A whole ass tub? Chill. My partner genuinely eats sour cream this way and it's deeply disturbing. I'm starting to think the comments are just going to be people being just disgustingly disturbed by the amount of sour cream that was ingested by this man, which same. It, to me, it's that he ate it all, even though he knew he wasn't meant to and then said, you go get it. That's the disrespect right there. If, my, if anybody did that to me, you can go ahead and eat all of my fucking toes. Not the asshole. I get another point for that. I'm gonna have to keep track of the points when I edit because bitch, I don't remember. I think I got two and a half points or three points or some three and a half points or something. Anyways, I honestly just like going through this thread. I think it's so funny. I think some of the stories are so weird. I didn't find a lot of funny stories today because I literally just clicked randomly like which ones I could find. But if I can find more funny ones, we'll go through some more crazy ones. And if you wanna send me any, you can send me them on YouTube. You can tell me about the story or I'll link my TikTok. Anyways, yes, you can see my OBS in the background. I don't care. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this was interesting. If it was, give me a like and a follow, subscribe, comment down below. Please, it'll help my channel grow. Thank you so much for watching though. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a good rest of your day and a good night and I will see you next time. Bye.